guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back for another self care Saturday. Originally, I had intended this self care Saturday to be about exercising and how exercise affects mental health. I'd done a huge amount of research into it, I was starting to put together the video, and then I realized that there was something else I needed to talk about first, and that was activist burnout how to deal with that, how to try to prevent it or recover from dealing with activist burnout. And the reason this came to mind is with the inauguration yesterday and the Women's March today, and having a chance to be at the Toronto Women's March for half an hour in the middle of it today, I realized that this is something that's so important to talk about and to address because we're about to enter the era of Trump as the President of the United States and the amount of division that has come from his campaign and now his presidency has affected not just Americans but citizens of the entire world. And for those of us who are vegan activists, it's also going to heavily impact our vegan and animal rights activism. So I wanted to get into some things that we can do to try to fight activist burnout and to take care of ourselves when we are activists and we are going out there and protesting against injustice, whether that be against racism or sexism or speciesism. The first thing to keep in mind is to nurture yourself. You need to take care of your physical health. You need to be eating healthy foods. You need to be drinking a lot of water, making sure that you're taking supplements for things that you don't get regularly, whether it's vitamin D because you live in Canada or B12. You need to be sure that you're taking your health seriously because if your physical health declines, your ability to be an effective activist goes right along with it. If you're interested in nutrition for mental health specifically, check out my last Self Care Saturday video. I will link it here for you guys and in the description. And in that video, I talk about nutrition specifically for mental health issues like depression and anxiety. The next thing to remember is to take a break. You don't need to be fighting every moment of every single day to be an effective activist. In fact, doing that just reduces your efficacy because you become fatigued, you become exhausted, and at that point you really can't advocate for anything to your full potential. So take a break, whether that just be making sure that you get enough sleep every single night, which is so important. I will link my Self Care Saturday video on sleep here and in the description box for you for some ideas on getting a better sleep. But it's not just about sleeping properly. It's also about taking a break, whether that be vegging out and watching your favorite show or reading a book in the bath. You need to take those breaks to allow your mind to rest. Being an activist takes so much out of us. Whether you're an activist in the LGBTQ plus community or an animal rights activist, this takes so much out of you. You have to be so compassionate, empathetic, and open to communicate with people who completely disagree with you and in some cases hate you for no particular reason. And that is so, so hard on every part of you as a human being and as a caring, sensitive, kind human being. And that's why you really need to make sure that you are taking the breaks that your body and mind need and deserve. The next important thing to consider is to find community. And this is so, so important for any movement, but especially for a movement like veganism that is still so small. We are such a minority of the global population. And being able to find those people who feel as you feel and think as you do, not to stick yourself in a bubble where you can't be challenged, but to find those people around whom you don't have to be guarded. Because it can be so hard to spend time around people who are constantly talking about the abuse and abuse of animals as if it were nothing, or having to constantly debate or explain things to people. While of course that is part of activism, and I'm not suggesting anyone completely remove themselves from the larger world so as to avoid these kinds of conversations, but it is so important to find that community so that you can kind of escape and take a vacation away from the larger world and be able to relax in the presence of other people who aren't problematic. Now, of course, you can do that online, and I think Facebook groups are a great way to connect with other people. I found many an amazing Facebook group for that exact purpose, but I really do recommend, if at all possible, find vegans or whatever kind of activist you are in your area and connect with them in person. That 
one-on-one -on -one connection, actually being able to see and touch and smell somebody else while you're talking to them, that real human connection is so valuable, not just for your mental health, but for every part of your being as a human. That connection can't really be reached through the internet. And while I feel so connected to all of you who are watching this video, I am just sitting in my office talking to a camera. And that's not the same as talking to you in the same room. So find those people in person, use meetup groups, use Facebook groups to meet people in your area, talk to people you know, try to find those people you can connect to and find that community who can support you and understand what you're going through. Another incredibly important thing to keep in mind is to release responsibility. Don't carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, as hard as that is. I know as someone who feels incredibly responsible for everything that's happening in the world, that that kind of feeling isn't sustainable. You are only one person, and while one person could do a whole lot, check out my most recent blog post linked here and in the description box to read about how one person can make a difference. You're still just one person, and you're just human. You can't be everywhere all of the time. You can't be on all of the time or even awake all of the time. So you can't take 100% of the responsibility of the world on your own conscience. You can only do your best and you can't do your best if you're constantly blaming yourself for the things that you can't possibly do. My next tip is to spend time with animals, especially for those of us who are vegan activists. I find that we tend to develop much deeper connections with non-human animals than we might have before or maybe we always did, and that's part of what brought us to veganism. But having true, deep, reciprocal relationships with non-human animals can be so fulfilling and inspiring and can reinvigorate us on our purpose and give us that drive we need to keep fighting every day. If you have companion animals, that can be a great way to get that connection. Or you can also go to something like a farm sanctuary, volunteer, help them out, and also get to connect with those animals that you are working so hard to save. Another thing you can do is celebrate the small things. Every small victory is still a victory. I got an email today from a lovely girl who said she'd found my blog and she was going vegan and she had some questions for me. And that was a victory and I celebrated that someone was going vegan, that my blog had something to do with that, that she felt like she could reach out to me for help and that I was able to reach out back to her and answer her questions and help her make that connection. To me, every time I get a message like that, a comment on YouTube or on my blog, an email or a direct message on Instagram, all of those things are amazing victories to me. And they add up to show me that what I'm doing is worth it that even though the entire world isn't vegan yet, I am making a difference and the work I'm doing is worth it. And all of this time and effort that I'm putting into it is worth it. And it's important to remember that, whether it's the tiniest thing like you made cookies and your friend thought they were amazing tasting, that is a victory. It may seem small, but your friend has now realized that vegan cookies can be delicious. And that's important. Yet another important thing to do that I find very difficult is to remain as positive as you can. Optimism is so important as an activist, as much as it can be easy to fall into that cynicism and seeing the world as a horrible place that can never change, that's not going to help you be an effective activist. You have to believe that there is some good in someone else if you're going to try to encourage them to tap into that goodness and change their habits, change the way they live their life for the better. If you don't believe there's any seed of goodness in that person, how are you going to help them to change? And it's the same with the world on a global scale. If you think that the world is completely devoid of goodness and worthiness, then what are you fighting for? How are you ever going to get where you're going? You need to see the good as hard as it can be and to try to pull that out of everything. Without that glimmer of hope, it becomes essentially impossible to keep fighting. And we need you to keep fighting. We need all of us to keep fighting harder than ever before. And we can't do it if we think that there's no point, if we think that we can never break through. Remember to do the things that you love that have nothing to do with your activism. I guarantee there's at least one thing you like to do that has nothing to do with your chosen form of activism and you have to keep doing that thing or those things. You need to do things you enjoy that are completely separate so you can turn that part of your brain off from time to time and let it rejuvenate. If you never went to sleep, 
you would become exhausted. If you never allow the part of your brain that focuses on activism to go to sleep, it's going to become exhausted, depleted. It's not going to be as strong, resilient, effective as we need it to be. So take that break. If it's coloring, drawing, watching sci-fi movies, reading fiction, knitting, skiing, swimming, whatever it is, make sure you make time to do it. Remember that other activists, whether they be vegan or otherwise, are our allies. We need each other. We have to stick together, all of us, if we want the world to change for the better. We've already seen that fighting within communities does nothing to promote that cause. Infighting within veganism doesn't help to spread veganism. And it's the same when you expand it to all forms of activism. When feminists and vegans fight, it doesn't help either cause. We need to come together. We need to show each other how our cause and theirs come together, can be part of the same thing. That really what we're all doing is fighting for the same thing, for equality, for kindness, for respect. That no one should be discriminated against based on an arbitrary trait, like their species or their gender, or the color of their skin. These basic tenets of all of these movements are the same. You're all fighting for the same essential thing, and we can't get there if we don't work together. So remember that those other activists, even if right now they can't see it, they are your ally. So find a way to connect to them. Connect with them in any way that you possibly can, and show them that whatever it is you're fighting for, is important too, and that their movement isn't going to suffer if they support you. And show them by example, support them and show them that that's only strengthening the rest of your activism. It's only strengthening the movement that you spend the most time in, because there is more than enough support to go around. And maybe, just maybe, the more welcoming you are, the more you support what they care about, they might come around and start to care a little bit more about what you care about. Lastly, if you are really struggling, please do not neglect to reach out, whether that be to the activist helpline, which I will link below, or to a therapist. If you are really suffering from activist burnout, activist fatigue, and you need someone to talk to, and you need that professional guidance, please do not hesitate. Reach out to those people, take advantage of those services, and get the help that you need to get back on track. Because we need you. You are important. You are integral to every movement that is now happening. We need your support and we need you to be healthy to do that. So I hope at least one of these tips will help you in fighting activist burnout. Thank you so much to everyone who participated today in the Women's March. It was so heartwarming and wonderful to be a part of it and to see around the world how many people were coming together, men, women, children, fighting against hate and division and the threat of the removal of basic human rights. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you for fighting for others and never backing down. And please remember to sometimes fight for yourself too, even if that means reading Harry Potter in the bath while listening to Cher. No judgment. I'll see you guys really soon in my next video. Bye. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on social media so that we can connect and consider supporting me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month to support what I'm doing with Plant-Based Bride in an attempt to spread the vegan message and intersectional veganism as far as I can.